Hi, everybody. My name is Steve Peterson. I'm a professor of music at the University of Illinois, and this is another one of our Encore at Illinois series. This one dealing with uh, music in the military. We've got many, several great uh, colleagues here with us uh, to talk about their experiences getting into the military, how it's been since they've been there, and everything in between, mostly answering uh, a lot of questions that are submitted ahead of time. My co-host today is Andrew McGill, uh, Director of Choral Activities, and together we'll pose questions to these folks for the next hour and uh, just have a good time learning everything we can about what it's like uh, to be a musician in, in, the, in the military. Uh, before we do that, I think we should probably go around and introduce every, and let everybody introduce themselves. Uh, and so we'll just start in the top left of my screen, which is Kelly Cartwright. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lieutenant Commander Kelly Cartwright. I am the Deputy Director of the United States Navy's Fleet Band Activities. And I'm one of our bandmasters, um, which in the Navy, the bandmasters are the conductors, uh, which is different than my counter the Marine Corps. <laughs> um, I enlisted in the Navy after graduating with a, a degree in music education from West Virginia University. Um, I was offered a job teaching middle school choir, sorry, Dr. McGill, and it just wasn't for me. And so I said, I'll do this Navy thing for four years and um, ended up really liking the job. And I've, I've at this point been stationed all over the world, Japan, I've visited, um, but not been stationed, been stationed in Italy, um, which is also where I met Master Sergeant Crowther. Um, been stationed stateside. I've traveled to 45 countries, and I most recently was the leader of the U.S. Pacific Fleet Band in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And now I'm at a, a, a desk job where we uh, manage the Navy's nine fleet bands. Um, they're managed locally as far as their operations, but we provide policy guidance, equipment, personnel, things of that nature. Fantastic. Uh, let's go to Wes Carroll, our recent U of I grad. Go Illini. Hi, everybody. I'm Wes Carroll. Um, I graduated from the University of Illinois in December of 2019 and enlisted in the Navy right after that. Uh, went through boot camp last February, actually. So I've only been in the Navy for about a year. Um, I'm a trumpet player, um, and I'm currently stationed at uh, the U.S. Pacific Fleet Band out in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. That's pretty much it. Short and sweet. Perfect. Stacy. Hey, everybody. I'm Master Sergeant Stacy Crowther. I'm currently the bandmaster, which, as Kelly said, is different in the Marine Corps than it is in the Navy. Uh, the bandmaster for the band here in Quantico, Virginia. I oversee uh, logistics, personnel management, operations, uh, things like that. I came in the Marine Corps back in 1999 when my mom said, I got the number to the Navy band. I want you to give them a call. Didn't know what the Navy was. Didn't know the difference of any services. I thought everybody was in the Army. So I've learned much better now. I'm a flute player by trade. I came in, so in 99, so I've got 20, I lost count. It's over 20. So I could retire, but we'll see what happens. Anywho, here I am as the bandmaster, progressing through my career. I was a drum major uh, leading the band on the march. So we do a lot of ceremonial marching. And when that's the case, then uh, we have a ceremonial conductor and we also have the drum major. So I did that for a bit, got promoted out of that job. Uh, and so now I'm also behind a desk playing the keyboard more these days than the, than the flute. Okay, Michael. Good morning, everyone. I'm musician second class, Michael Bookman. I have been in the Navy since 2009 and my path is a little weird. Um, I went to school at uni the University of North Texas and I didn't know the military had bands. And then I had an old buddy of mine, Matt Shea, who's now an officer in the Navy, give me a call about an audition. And I auditioned and I'm still in. And I'm also stationed in Pacific Fleet, um, Honolulu, Hawaii. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Michael, are you, you're a cover player as well? Is that right? I am. Okay. Curtis, please. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Major Curtis Kinsey. Um, um, my career started uh, back in 2002. So I have, um, well, it'll be close to 19 coming up here soon. Um, I studied at Westminster Choir College under the esteemed Dr. Andrew McGill. And um, 
after my graduation there, I auditioned uh, to become a singing member of the United States Army Chorus in uh, Washington, DC. And I did that for about five or six years, um, after which I auditioned to, um, to become an officer because I really wanted to lead choirs. And uh, that was the best path uh, that I saw at the time to, to do so. So um, I gained my commission in 2007. And since then I have um, been the director of the United States Army Chorus, uh, the Soldiers Chorus out of Fort Meade, Maryland. Um, I've been the commander of a band at uh, First Cavalry Division down at Fort Hood, Texas, um, and a few other assignments. Uh, my current assignment is I am the uh, Force Com Staff Bands Officer. So I travel around and evaluate um, Army bands within Force Com's purview. Uh, so it's a, a, a desk job half the time and an evaluation job the other half of the time. Uh, and that's my story. So one a quick question I would have before I get to the script here. I noticed three of you are actually in what we call desk jobs right now. But my, my experience is that that's not where you will necessarily remain for the rest of your careers, that you tend to kind of move in and out of those positions. Is that right? Like, it's not like you're going to, never pick up your flute again or whatever. Uh, anybody want to comment on that just a little bit? Uh, I'd be happy to. Um, in the job that I'm in right now, I've probably got another six months or so, and then I'll go back to leading a band. So, and I think we, we kind of rotate in and out of those positions and you gain valuable experience that helps you when you go back out. But at least in my experience here, we, we kind of, once you get senior, you come in and out of those desk jobs versus actual music making jobs. Stacy Curtis, same thing. Yeah, I'll say that um, I'm at a desk job, and because of how the Marine Corps system works, the the rank that I'm at will keep me at a desk job for the remainder of my career. Hmm. I do have the opportunity; I will be transferring down to the School of Music in Virginia Beach in July to be the head of the instrumental division there. So, still kind of a desk job. Um, I actually, right before this meeting, I just came from a woodwind quintet rehearsal, so. It's not a requirement that I still play my flute, but we still get together and we have our, our staff quintet um, that we still play for. And we had a retirement a couple weeks ago. So we don't, it's not often, it's few and far between, but when I get the opportunity to get away from my desk, I, I love to get out there. Uh, on the Army side of things, it's, um, there's a bit of a rotation uh, through, there are three or four uh, staff positions, which, are mostly desk jobs, uh, but all of the other positions are uh, leading either musical ensembles or commanding a band um, with many musical ensembles. So I'd say the majority of our time is spent um, connected to music and a, a pretty small uh, period of time throughout a career is behind a desk only. Andrew? Yeah, what, um, what made you first want to explore this way of being a professional musician? Wes, do you want to jump in there? Sure. Um, so I, like a lot of other people, I didn't really know too much about the military band coming into this. I just kind of thought for most branches, the, the DC bands were it. I, I think I knew about Army regional bands, but I, I, I never really did any research. I never really had any like end goals in mind coming into my degree. But um, I found out about this job from my professor, uh, Ronald Rahm, who had heard about it from somebody. Um, then that led to me doing some more research, figuring out that this is actually a pretty cool job that involves a lot of traveling, a lot of playing for people. Um, and that's kind of what I've always wanted to do, just kind of like show what I can do to people and just enjoy the music making part of it. So I just kind of started auditioning and here I am. One of the things I learned after being at Pearl Harbor with Kelly's band a year or so, was it last year, two years ago? Yeah. Um, was just how happy these folks are to be 
making a salary and playing their instruments. You know, um, we all think we want to be in the Chicago Symphony or whatever, and that's just not going to happen for most of us. But uh, these these bands and choirs sing and play at an extremely high level, and you know, I, I think at the very basic level, I you know, I've talked to some of these folks, and it, and they kind of just say, you know what. I get to make music every day and I'm getting paid for it and I'm getting retirement and I'm getting to see the world. And, you know, I, maybe I'm encapsulating this too simply, but, um, you know, that, that's something any of you who we're talking to here, if you want to keep playing and, uh, you know, well, here's an example. These are people that are still working right now during COVID and still getting a paycheck and still being musicians, you know, so there's that. Right. So, okay. Um, let's talk about something else here um well this is a simple question and one person can answer it do you have to enlist in the military in order to have a music career in the military and you want to talk about the this would be a good time to talk about the enlistment process too because another question was do you have to go through basic training in order to be a musician in the military uh, michael you want to answer that for us Well, for the Navy, you have to go to boot camp. Um, you have to learn how to do all the things that a regular sailor would have to do. Now, once you get out of boot camp, the need to have a sidearm goes away because you know you become a musician. We don't need guns. Um, but yeah, um, the way our process works, we find a Navy audition, we audition. If we win that audition, we're offered a position, we're given a letter, I believe. Then we talk to a recruiter, go to boot camp, and we're in. Is that different in uh, anybody? In, uh, Curtis or Stacy, do you want to add anything to that? Yes, in the Marine Corps, it's, it's, um, it's almost the same, it's slightly different. We have special music recruiters that are out there. There are a certain number of districts, recruiting districts out there, and each district is assigned a specific Marine musician who is the musical technical assistant. So those are the guys who go out there, and if someone's interested, if you have a candidate who um, wants to join the Marine Corps, they'll send this MTA out there, and you'll go through an audition process with that MTA. You have to pass the audition before you even talk to or some cases, like for me, I talked to the recruiter before I knew about uh, the music part. So um, it just depends on what, what kind of information you want. But once you pass the audition, then you can talk to the recruiter. And yes, you will enlist in, uh, in the military. You will go to boot camp. For us, um, the, the Marine requirement is the same. The whole every Marine is a rifleman lasts even when you get in your band. For example, um, just two weeks ago, I had my band out. The band is the security augmentation force for the base. So we were out at the gun range, firing the shotguns, firing the rifles. So we still have those qualifications that we maintain, but we've got a concert next week also. So we, it's the best of both worlds. Huh. That's interesting. Now, the one exception, I, be I believe this is true of all the bands and all the services is that the uh, the Marine, the president's own, the Marine Band in Washington, they do not do basic training, but everybody else does. Is that correct? All the other, even the Washington branches? Curtis can would know the answer to that. Yes, as far as the Army goes, uh, even the special bands, um, they, they do go to basic training. Uh, they're, they are different than the rest of the field, however, because basic training is the last Army... Um, army training they'll really do uh, no more marksmanship is necessary in their careers um the, there's a minimum they have to pass the pt test uh, twice a year and maintain um you know, you know the, the body weight and um that kind of stuff but in, in terms of furthering military training it stops after basic training but that's the minority the the majority of the of army musicians uh, are 42 Romeos as opposed to 42 Sierras, the special bands. The 42 Romeos continue as any other um, career that you could have in the army. So you'll have to go to the, all of the schools and, and 
you know, you're, you're just like a, your weapon is your music and, but you, you're, a, you're fully a soldier. You deploy and you do everything every other soldier does. I would like to chime in that in the Navy, we do continue to go to sea. Um, we've got bands that are stationed um, outside of the United States and one from within the United States. But whenever we go, um, whenever we go on deployments, it's usually part of Navy's either partner building efforts or humanitarian assistance missions. And we, we're, we're doing music when we go. Could uh, one of you speak about what the audition process is like and how rigorous it is um, and, and just what that, that experience is? I'm going to ask Michael just because he was our subject matter expertise in our latest uh, trumpet audition. Sorry to throw you under the bus. <laughs> okay, so I'm still learning the new process of auditions. Um, now, when I when I joined, you called a band and you set up an individual audition with the band that's closest to you. Now we're doing it through Zoom and there's a lot of tapes to listen to and it's it's a long process i think the last audition that we did it was two rounds the first round was just listening to prepared music we looked at your resume your navy questionnaire the second round were the musicians that we wanted to hear more of and it's basically the same as any other audition you have your music to practice and prepare it's just all through zoom now so it's 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 a, little, it's a lot more like it's it's different that good ma'am that's perfect and I, I think the the only thing i would add is that zoom is temporary um we'll get back to regional auditions once COVID allows but this was just you know we had to we can't stop uh, hiring people and so we kind of had to find creative ways around and so what we do, because you obviously can't hear everything over Zoom, is simultaneously record the audition. And so we are able to listen to those recordings after we see the, the live audition. And uh, it's an excerpt-based audition that's sort of indicative of the repertoire that you'd be playing in the Navy. So for us, it's got a mix for, particularly for the brass instruments and saxophones, a mix of classical and commercial music, because you, we don't, in the fleet especially, we don't really have the uh, luxury of being able to specialize just because of the size of our bands. While we're at it, then could someone just quickly tell us um, from each of the branches how many how many ensembles are out there? Uh, you know, if if you want to join the Navy, uh, I know I know you get moved around, but there are a certain number of fleet bands, and then there's the Washington band. I believe that. But could you could could each one of the branches go through and just tell us really quickly how many how many bands and, and choirs are there and orchestras are there out there in in the entire from the very best all the way down to the others. So in the Navy, we have uh, nine fleet bands. Uh, there's three outside of the continental United States uh, in Japan, Italy, and then Hawaii as well. Um, and then we have six more fleet bands on the continent. Uh, it's, I believe it's San Diego, uh, Silverdale, Washington, Great Lakes, Illinois, Jacksonville, Florida, Norfolk, Virginia, and... Uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Um, and then we have two uh, premier bands. One is the DC band, which is a, a full wind ensemble, uh, a full jazz band and a choir as well. I believe it's a chamber choir. I don't think it's a very big one. And then in uh, we also have the Annapolis, the Naval Academy band, um, which is a more chamber group, and they just play for the, the Naval Academy, but they're also a premier band. How about the Marines? Uh, in the Marine Corps, we have, starting with the President's Own that's in D.C., like, we, as we said, they don't go to boot camp. Um, that band is huge. It's about 170, but it's comprised of the, an entire concert band and an orchestra. They don't have um, a choir or a chorus there, but they do have the orchestra. Um, and from that band, they just break out. If a requirement is for a brass quintet here, they'll schedule any member to be a brass quintet. So it's not a designated, you are the brass quintet for the Marine Band. It's the personnel is constantly rotating. Um, we have 10 field bands that are out there and each field band we're typically made up of 50 enlisted and one officer to lead the band. That's our 
table of organization that we have. A lot of the bands are stacked right now, so we're a little bit heavy in the numbers, which is good, especially given all the outside requirements that uh, the expectation is. Um, so within that concert band, we designate personnel to fill certain requirements, depending on what that may be. Maybe the bass comes down and says, hey, um, the bass commander really loves country music. So we'll put our popular music group together to play a whole bunch of country music or whatever the case may be. We've got brass band, um, jazz combo, wooden quintet, brass quintet, uh, jazz ensemble, any number of different ensembles, as well as a full marching ceremonial band and a full concert band. And we don't have choirs. Even in the field bands, we don't have choirs, but we actually just recently started hiring vocalists as one of our military occupational specialties. So we're, we're moving on up just a little bit in the world. Curtis, what about the Army? Uh, with the Army, um, within U U.S. Forces Command, there are nine. Uh, those are the, your, your typical division bands. Um, similarly, there are no choirs there. There's probably one or two vocalist positions uh, looking really for more of a pop singer. Uh, and then um, under TRADOC, I can't remember exactly how many, but these, these are your centers of excellence, the so places where you either have basic training or, or some other big schools, and their main mission is to um, uh, play graduations, gra graduation-related um, ceremonies. Uh, but these bands similarly have lots of different ensembles, brass quintets, woodwind quintets, uh, rock bands and and ceremonial bands. Um, then there's there's a band in Germany, um, which is the uh, the Usurer band, and they're a pretty big band. They they have sort of they have a, a vocal ensemble, but it's not auditioned for to, for a career they'll take people of other mos's you could be a truck driver for the army but you can win this audition and go sing for two years and then go back to being a truck driver um, so whatever your mos is you would come temporarily sing in a sing in the show choir and then go back uh, then we have the special bands uh, in dc and west point up at west point um, they they have jazz band, concert band, um, I, I, the Hellcats, I think, are a, a, a bugling a ceremonial ensemble. Um, then in DC, we have the US Army Field Band, where they, they are the touring ensemble. And they are large, I'd say 150 people, and they have a, a professional rock band, a jazz band, and a concert band, and there is one of our choruses. It's about a 28 member mixed chorus um, there at the field band. And at Pershing's own, the United States Army Band in DC, they're about 200 strong. Uh, they also have a chorus, uh, which is about 24 uh, ma male singers, all male singers. And then there's a smaller ensemble, about eight which is a mixed ensemble. In addition to that, they have concert band and jazz band and um, an orchestra uh, and several, several other small ensembles. I got to spend some time with that band in Washington and uh, over a couple of days. And I was just incredibly amazed at how busy they are. I mean, they, I, you go behind this door and there's people back there that are ironing their uniforms for the next, uh, ceremonial bur uh, burial that they have right next door at uh, in the cemetery at Arlington or whatever. I, I was just, they were, it was crazy how busy and just in and out people all the time going and doing stuff. It was, it was really quite impressive to, to see all that. So the army band, the army has more quote unquote special bands than anybody else. They have three, uh, right? And the Navy has two. Uh, the Marines have basic have, have one, and I think the Air Force, what they've got the 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 band in, uh, at Langley, and then they've I th is the band at the uh, Academy now. That I th is that I don't know if that's a special band or not. It was, and then it wasn't, and I don't know if it is back again or not. But anyway, okay, Andrew, how about something else? 
Yeah, this sort of brings up another interesting question that I think has come up from some of our students. That's what's the daily schedule like for a member of these ensembles? And related to that, I know that that there have been sometimes when I've hired soloists for other gigs, for oratorios or things, and I've been able to use members of the armed services uh, vocal ensembles, and they seem to have some time to to do some outside performing. So, how is it a how much is is that true? Is it a an all-consuming career, or is there room for some freelancing on the side? And what's the daily life like? That's a great question. Where do we want to start? I can start. Okay, thank you. Well, the Marine Corps, we uh, we have a set schedule. We call it the plan of the day. It's typed up every day, submitted out. We send it via email. Even with COVID, we are still coming to work every day. We have started a split operation schedule. So really depending on the season, as far as if we're in our busy season, usually the summer months are pretty busy with changes of command and um, retirements and stuff like that. So if we're not in a busy season, for example, now we're not in a busy season. So we'll try to integrate a lot of our training stuff and get it out of the way. Rifle range, um, like I said, the security augmentation force training, all of that stuff, we'll try to knock it out, get it out of the way early on. In the summer months, when we start getting busy, it's mostly just we come in, maybe we'll do a rehearsal and we'll launch out to go do a gig. Um, for today, for example, um, we had everybody come in at 745. They broke into sectionals at 08. At 9, they had um, concert band. And we were at Chow, 1300, we have jazz ensemble. 1330, we have logistical time. That's 130. Now they're launching into logistical time. So even in the bands, even though all of these musicians are all part of ensembles, but we have to still logistically run our sections. So we have a music library, we have an admin section, we have a transportation section, we have a sound reinforcement, all of those um, th supply, all those things have to get done. And so the musicians within the band have those collateral duties that they're responsible for, as well as maintaining your acts and playing in, in the appropriate ensembles. Um, we do have physical training on our schedule uh, because we do have to maintain height weight standards we have to pass the physical fitness test all of those things still apply uh, so that's part of our our daily um what a day in the life sort of would be like but it, it really depends on uh circumstance and time of year oh and uh if we're able to gig outside totally as long as it doesn't impact the mission and we have a lot of people who teach um, locally. They'll maybe give private lessons to students or things like that. I know at the Marine Band, there were a lot of people who had outside uh, jobs like that. But as long as it doesn't interfere with what your daily duties are, um, your daily roles, responsibilities, all that stuff, then, you know, feel free as long as you're representing the Marine Corps in, in a good manner. Is the same true for singers, Curtis? Uh, for singers, yes. Uh, gigging outside, um, absolutely. As long as it's, as long as everyone keeps the priority that what what Uncle Sam needs of you comes first, and uh, if it, you've got to tell your outside employers that if something big comes up, even if you're on leave, uh, you may have to bail on your civilian mission say for instance you hire someone to sing messiah solos um and then a former president passes away well the army chorus is directly involved in some of the you know the music regarding those types of um fu funerals so that person would be recalled and have to uh leave you hanging and go sing for for the state so um, usually that doesn't happen and people can work it out and, and they have, um, they have many, many jobs on the side. I know, uh, one of the bases that, uh, used to sing in the army chorus, he went on leave and, and toured, uh, toured Europe singing Porgy in, uh, Porgy and Bess. And so things are possible. I, the first St. Matthew Passion I conducted, I used an evangelist who was in the Army Chorus, and he was Robert amazing. Dillow. It was, it was Robin. He sang beautifully for me, and, and it was such a great relationship, and he seemed to have no trouble being able to do that, so it, it worked for me as well. Let's 
Steve, you're muted. I think this is an interesting question. Maybe you can each answer this if you'd like. Uh, what are, what is the most, what was the most underrated or what are the most underrated or less known, but really great mu military music opportunities that you've come across during your time? Uh, Kelly. I don't know that it's underrated, but I think one of the best parts of the job is seeing how music brings people together. And, and we've gotten to see that, you know, all over the world. And, you know, we think a lot of times of military bands stateside in, in big ceremonies or, you know, in, in football stadiums, playing the national anthem. And those are all great experiences. But I can say from my experience, some of the best experiences I've had have been, you know, remote atolls in the Pacific, people who rarely get to hear live music and, you know, seeing them come together and you know we just we share in that moment they share their music with us and we share ours with them and, and that that's the part of the job that I think I love the most that and just the people that I get to work with are just they're top notch I really I, I have incredible colleagues and for me that those are the two best parts of the job. Wes you're new at this you may not have a good answer yet but maybe you know, what's the biggest surprise you've had the biggest most pleasant surprise you've had? Yeah well it, yeah, like like you said, I'm I'm still new, and I when I came into the Navy, uh, COVID was already in full swing, so I haven't really gotten a chance to go travel, which is what I'm really really excited for. Like uh, Command, Commander Cartwright said, um, I'm super duper excited to go out and play in some remote corners of the world for people who don't normally get to hear what we do and to see that. Uh, the what I did get to do, um, like right after I checked on board uh, at Pack Fleet, um, I was able to uh, get exposed to some pretty cool ceremonies that happened as far as uh, like anniversaries of World War II, uh, the anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attacks um, and the December 7th ceremony. Um, all that stuff is held in very high esteem here on the island and just being able to witness it and see all the people in the military and in the community kind of, you know, come together for that was very cool for me. Um, but like I said, I'm very excited to, to experience the, the other parts of the job as well. Stacy, anything to add? I would say um, I totally agree with what the other two have said. It's uh, the experiences that you gain here are, I mean, it's going to be completely different whether you come in right out of high school or whether um, you have experiences that people who don't come in would never have. So meeting the people that you meet and playing at the places that you get to play at and travel to the places you get to travel to uh, has been really great. One of the things that I most recently learned about is not just music specific, but I guess military related. I'm not sure if the other services have this, but we've had a couple of guys one just left last week because he's going um, to teach music in Indiana. He came in the Marine Corps already teaching. And now there's this program called the Skillbridge program, which I'd never heard about. But basically, he's six months out from his EAS, his end of active service. Uh, and this program puts you in connection and allows you to get job opportunities and training outside of the Marine Corps to prepare you for when you get out. So he's already in Indiana and he'll be working in his teaching job. So this program has been really beneficial. And what I've seen here working in, uh, in this unit, several people have taken advantage of that. Michael, anything to add? Well, like I said before, I went to the University of North Texas. I, I left there. I toured with a bunch of rock bands doing all the things things that you do on the road with rock bands. And um, I got tired of that, so I joined the Navy. And I think the thing that surprised me the most once I joined was, you know, I went out to Japan pretty close to after getting out of boot camp and just traveling, seeing other countries and meeting all of my trumpet heroes from that got to play with James Morrison in Australia. Eric, that was something that opened my eyes after I joined, that although I wear the uniform, I can still go out and play with all of my heroes and continue building my own resume as a musician. So. 
Great. Curtis. Anything to add? Yeah. Uh, there's a wide variety of musical opportunities uh, spanning from uh, appearances at the Super Bowl, uh, singing the national anthem or, or America the Beautiful, uh, working with celebrities in, in that capacity. Um, and then there's deploying with a rock band playing for soldiers who are out at a, at a FOB, um, a forward operating base, um, you know, who really miss home, need a piece of home. And uh, you just bring a little bit of that home to them for a few minutes to sort of forget about uh, the daily troubles or the separation from family or whatever it is, you get to help them sort of take a time out and, and a little respite. Um, and then in between, you've got uh, field ceremonies where you have uh, somebody who's uh, uh, colonels who are changing command and um, you're playing their change of command ceremony. So there's a very wide variety. Uh, you could be uh, in, in the army chorus, you could be uh, traveling out to sing with um, a symphony somewhere, singing Schoenberg's uh, Gura Leader, and then the next week you're um, you're singing in in you know a cafeteria uh, for for middle schoolers. So it's a, a wide variety. That brings up another interesting question: is I'd love to know what sort of the balance of repertoire is that you perform as a as a military musician, because that's one of the questions. I would have had. And just quickly as an aside, Steve Peterson, I think we may have finally found an institution that uses more acronyms than the University of Illinois. University of Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. So you're asking about repertoire? Um, boy. It's a wide variety. It, it, it depends sort of which type of band you're, you're talking about. If you're talking about a division band, let's say at Fort Hood, Texas, uh, you're playing a lot of marches. And then you might be putting on a holiday show where, where you know, one time a year, you're putting together whatever you can for the community to, to experience the holidays. Some might be some jazz, might be some arrangements of Oh Holy Night. It could be anything. Um, and, and then, if you look at the special bands, you've got ensembles that need to be so versatile because one day you're singing Toby Keith and then the next day you're singing Schubert. Um, or if you're in the band, one day you're playing Sousa and the next day you're playing Hindemith. Uh, so it really requires a lot of flexibility. Uh, but I would say the majority of the field, if you take the special bands out of the picture for a moment. Uh, really, you're looking at um, timeless popular songs, patriotic uh, and, and marches are the bulk of what you'll do. And then, you know, and if your passion is uh, playing Percy Granger or Hindemith, you might touch on it once or twice in your career, but not very often. Uh, more so in the special bands, though, you do get to dip your toe in those waters more frequently, but uh, the majority of it really needs to be catered to what makes people feel good about America and America's military. So that's sort of what, what drives the repertoire choices. That's a great answer. So um, I'll go ahead and ask the question, what would one expect to make as a member of a military group? And I think the second half of that is that there's a, in my impression is there's besides a good and steady salary, there's also something that one can look forward to. And that's that you can retire from the military with full benefits and still have a good bit of your life to start a second career or continue that one, right? Uh, so maybe you could talk about those two things. You know, what, what, what is there a range? Do you make a lot more when you've been in 15 years than you are in your first six months? And uh, and then what about retirement? Is it, at what point can you do that if you wish? And what does that all mean? Um, who should we go to? Kelly, you wanna answer that? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, sorry, Michael, go, go ahead. Michael. Michael, please. Well, for the Navy, it, 
I think it really depends on where you're stationed. Um, what you make as a salary in Norfolk isn't going to be the same as what you make as a salary in Japan. Um, you get different allowances. Um, housing allowances are different. Um, your cost of living allowances are going to be different. And your travel pay, we also get a little bit of money for travel um, that we do. It's commercial, commercial flights, not we don't get paid for getting on the ship for five months, but like if we fly into Vietnam or we fly to Guam, you know, we'll, we'll get a little extra money there. I'm not going to give a dollar total for a year, but I will say that the pay is consistent. It's a very livable wage. You will be able to save money as well while paying off school if you still have to do that. And again, you still have the opportunity to teach on the outside, perform on the outside. So it's, it's not your only options for income. Let's chime in with uh, regarding uh, student loans. I know for the Navy, we have uh, $65,000 in student loan repayment uh, for those who enlist. So that, that does help for a lot of folks. And then you can also, um, you can be eligible for tuition assistance while you're on active duty. I've gotten two master's degrees paid for by the United States Navy, one of which was at the University of Illinois, but my first one was at the University of Hawaii in education. So um, yeah, there are definitely those type of benefits as well. And then in addition to um, your medical benefits, um, you know, and uh, as Michael alluded to you, there are different allowances based on your location and also whether or not you have, uh, you're married or have dependents of some sort. So that also changes. As far as the pay scale, it's just pub public record. You can Google EO, E1 all the way up to 06 is where we, where musicians in the, all the branches range. So, if, you know, people want to look that up. It's, it's just public record. Great. In the army, all musicians come in at E4. Uh, is that the case with the other services? For the Navy, if you, are, uh, you have a degree, you come in at E3, but it doesn't take long to make E4. Um, in the Marine Corps, everybody comes in at E2, regardless if you have a degree or not. But there is a, um, a promotion plan that's in the contract. So if you are two years as an E4, three years as an E5, if you've got your degree, um, the Marine Corps does not offer loan repayment, but you get the pride of belonging uh, and you get to wear your Eagle Globe and Anchor. So there's a lot of intangibles that come with being a Marine that aren't necessarily monetary in nature. To answer part of the question that you asked, uh, it's 20 years to retirement eligibility uh, with very few exceptions. Sometimes there's early retirements and it depends if the, if the military services are trying to shrink or trying to grow. Sometimes they make it enticing for people to leave and will offer early retirement options. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is that I'm not sure how the Army compares with the other services in this range, but if you have students who are looking at a career uh, in, in military music, uh, at least within the Army, if you're auditioning as a 42 Romeo, um, you're entering at, at about E4 level if you're looking at the pay scale if you want to Google that. If you land a job in one of the special bands, then while you will enter at E4 while, during basic training, it's an automatic and immediate promotion to E6. So if you are aiming toward a special band audition in the army, that's where you should look on the pay scale, E6. Pretty sure that's consistent across the board for all four branches for the, for the um, premier bands. Andrew? One of the questions that um, that came up from some of our students was, was um, you know, you've talked about how exciting the traveling can be. Um, how difficult or easy have you found sort of home life balance to do? And especially somebody wanted to know about what it's like to have a family and have a military musical career. Kurt, do you want to start talking about that? Because I know that's something you have done. Yes, yes. Um, well, I, I think the big thing you have to think about is just the moving. Um, the exception is the special bands because those 
those bands, they're, they're permanent positions. You can stay at one band for your entire career. Um, so that's a very stable thing for a family, uh, with the exception of the field band, which is touring. So you're, you're away from your family for about three or four months of the year. Uh, and that's, that's a challenge. Now, if you're anywhere else in army music, you're going to be relocated every, every two to four years, depending on what your assignment is. So that can be challenging for folks who have kids in school and, um, you know, kids in high school who are wanting to stay with their friends and having to start over in a new city can be a challenge. So it's not, you just have to know it up front, talk to some people who have done it to see if you're up for that challenge. As far as the day-to-day -day home life, I leave here at four o'clock in the afternoon and I go home and I'm, I don't have kids, I'm not married, but I have two dogs and we have a fun life together. So we can still go on hikes, we can still have adventures, we can still do all of the lifetime things. You know, um, I guess it would be scenario specific and where you're stationed or where, whether or not the, the band is traveling at that time, but you absolutely have a good work home life balance. and. I think that the military in general does really well with helping people to balance that when they're feeling overly stressed with work or there are so many programs in place that can help people uh, facilitate a better transition between home and, and work life. I think I'd also just like to add that like when I first came in and I came in in uh, 1998, there weren't a lot of senior females in uh, Navy music. And I think the military has gotten much better about you know, more generous maternity leave policies and, you know, travel restrictions for the first year after children are born. And now we have far more, um, you know, females that have, have uh, women that have children within our community. I mean, right now, one of our senior enlisted leaders is a mom and she's got two kids and, you know, she's, you know, so it's, it's really great for our young folks coming in to be able to see that, you know, you can have a family and you can be successful and the, the military will foster that for you. This is a question maybe maybe for Curtis. Um, is it true that the special bands prefer to hire civilians over active military musicians or is the audition process completely blind to everything besides the audition audio? I don't know if you can answer that for all the branches or even for the army, but, or, or is it the opposite true? It, do they prefer to look at someone who comes from somewhere else? And, and I'll ask another question when I'm thinking about it. I think I've heard of cases where people actually switch from one branch to the other in Washington, DC. Um, can you talk about all those things? Yes, I'll see if I can remember all three. Um, to your first point, it depends on who's hiring uh, because there are varying opinions on whether it's preferable to hire um, someone who's already in in the army versus someone who, who's directly from civilian life. Uh, uh, so uh, if, if you're talking about just the special band, um, the challenge is uh, leadership uh, positions. Let's say for instance, you, you have on a uh, audition panel, um, E6s through E9s um, listening to whatever, uh, a tenor or a clarinet player, whatever, whatever instrument. And they're auditioning two people. It's down to two people. One is a civilian who would come in the army as an E4 immediate, immediately to E6 and would be sort of at the bottom of the totem pole uh, in terms of leadership. They would be junior to everyone in that room. Whereas if you have someone who's coming from another military band, and they would be coming in at E7, um, then that person would sort of be coming in ahead of some of the people oh, in that room. So that's interesting. I never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's certain expectations of rank in terms of, you know, you can't just be at the bottom of the totem pole um, if you outrank other people in that room. You're expected to be a leader. So that comes into play. But, you know, some different uh, ensembles have different takes on that. Uh, so it's a little different where you go. 
The other part of your question, go ahead, go ahead. I say for the Navy, uh, only E6 and below are eligible to audition for our premier bands and it's still a completely blind audition. I can say during my time at the Pacific Fleet Band, I had three of my fleet band members audition and successfully win jobs at the premier bands for the Navy. Uh, and I can speak to the Marine Band. Um, I came to my position here in Quantico from working as the assistant drum major for the President's Own. Um, so my job there was to train all of the new, uh, newly selected Marines that had uh, come in and won positions there. Sitting in that audition process, it is a completely blind audition. So you would have people, like, like Kelly said, from the bands who audition. We don't have a rank requirement uh, from the fleet bands if they want to audition for uh, one of the premier bands. Uh, it is completely blind until you get to the later portions if they make it past round one or, or what have you. But during my time there, and I know, Steve, you, you uh, brought up a point if service transfer. So a couple of times there was somebody from the Air Force who had left the Air Force, but they do have to get a letter basically contingent on removal or um, not removal, extraction. That's the wrong word too. But from the Air Force, basically you're released from service from that service and you can join another service. So I did deal with that a couple of times up there at the Marine Band, but it is a completely blind audition. It's, they, they want the best one for the job and the best player that's gonna fit into the section the best, regardless of currently active or coming from a civilian life. Sounds like there's no one answer to that question. Mm -hmm. it, it depends where, where, where you're talking about. Most of the audition processes I have been involved in have not been blind. We've always known right up front who we're listening to, uh, but a lot of places do do it blind to be, you know, objective and fair. Uh, so it depends where you go. Okay. Andrew, we're getting close to our time. What else do you have? I think we are. So, so I thought maybe just a real nuts and bolts question, which is if, if one of our listeners decides this is something they'd really like to explore, who should they reach out to? Do they just call the recruitment office or do they, I mean, what's the best way for them to either find out more information or if they're even ready to sort of pursue further than that, where do they go? For us, you just uh, contact our audition coordinator who is chief musician, Chris Paston. But if you Google, you know, Navy music, it's, it's we're listed on the um, Washington DC's Navy bands page. You can find it just about anywhere. But that, that particular person is the one who will kind of get you on the journey. Some people say you should talk to him before you talk to a recruiter, and I would tend to agree with that just because a lot of recruiters, we're such a small community, don't know a whole lot about Navy music. Wes, That's you've just cool. been through this, I guess. Was it was there yeah. anything tricky you, should, you would like to share with somebody else who's interested? I, I was just about to echo what uh, Commander Cartwright said. Um, like when I first wanted to do some research on the audition, the, the Navy band website was very helpful. Um, and like they had pretty much everything that you needed to know on their website. So that was really great, but they also have uh, plenty of pages or uh, numbers and emails uh, that you can contact with any questions. Um, in my experience, if you know somebody in any of the bands too, reach out to them. Uh, most of the students know me and I might be stepping out on a limb a little bit, but if anybody's interested, you can reach out to me and I can put you in touch with a number of people um but yeah it's it's very very uh easy to find some of these websites and uh emails and phone numbers to contact and it's most everybody in the music world within the military knows exactly what they're talking about we're all professionals um but yes uh if you reach out to a recruiter first more likely than not they're not going to really know uh what the music program's all about so they might give you some incorrect information. So it's, it's probably best to reach out to somebody within the music world. Oh, fantastic. Well, how about, how about maybe a closing thought from everybody? Anything we didn't cover? Uh, one thing maybe we, uh, potential students need to know uh, that, we, that, that they don't yet, something you wish you knew uh, earlier, and if you have nothing, that's okay too. It's kind of an awkward question, but let, let, if we can kind of go around the room one more time, I think that'd be great. Michael, do you have anything to add to what we've said so far? Sure. Um, something that I wish I would have done before joining the Navy, I wish I would have talked to more people. Um, 
I really didn't have an idea of what the job was until I started the job. Um, I also auditioned for one band and ended up in another. And I think make sure you do your research before you audition. Now, while you're preparing for an audition, I will say like after just no, we're losing. recently judging trunches for branch out a little bit more. Uh, we are, can you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're kind of coming in. Are, is everybody having trouble with them coming in and out just a little bit or is it just yes. me? Yeah, okay, so tr keep talking, it's okay. It, it may, all right. Um, those of you that are still in school, um, it's great to be just a classical player or it's great to be just a jazz player. I would say bring the two together. Um, I know in the military, we are definitely looking for people who can do both, who can do everything. Because not only are we a marching unit or a ceremonial unit that plays marches, we also need those same musicians to play in a big band, to play in a rock band, to play in a brass quintet, woodwind quintet, um, sing in front of a rock band. So we are looking for people who are versatile. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you. That's great advice. Uh, Curtis? I would echo what someone said earlier about recruiters. And that is, yes, they very few of them know anything about a bandsman's life. So um, really encourage you to look um, on a website of, of a band that you've become aware of or or that you want to audition for. Uh, it's a little clearer with the special bands. You go to their website and you you audition. But if you're looking at, I just want a career playing my instrument anywhere in the army or, or navy or wh whichever service, then pick a band, call a, call a few of them because that's really the best place to start. And then once you've gleaned enough information to make some decisions, then go to go to a recruiter and talk about the audition process. But don't start with the recruiter. I've also heard a couple horror stories uh, about recruiters, you know, promising things that just aren't, they just don't know, you know, and oh, sure, you could do that. Oh, yeah, well, sign right here and you'll be in Pearl Harbor in two weeks, you know, <laughs> whatever. That's an exaggeration, but uh, I think, you know, the old Ronald Reagan statement, trust but verify, is probably not a bad idea. So I, I, that's great advice. I'd go to the source as often as you can. Uh, who we got left? Uh, Stacey? I've not got uh, much to add, just I mimic what the recruiters say. Uh, for the Marine Corps, if you're looking in to join the Marine uh, band field, you can marines.com. Again, it will take you to a local recruiter, but that local recruiter, our MTAs do a good job of getting out to the recruiting districts and working with the recruiters. So not teaching them how to audition and things like that, but who to contact when you do run into um, somebody interested in the band, uh, because you're, it's really, you're a unicorn, really. So they're going to help you out, but also be aware of the fake news promises that, that they might throw out there. I was really young when I joined, I was 17. So I didn't know what I didn't know and I didn't do any research. And here I am 21 years later, still trying to figure out what I wanna do when I grow up, but I, th I think I've come pretty far. So if, if there's any interest at all, you know, you just jump in both feet and be the best at what you do when you do it. I've forgotten who's left. Kelly. Well, in West too. <laughs> okay, in West too. Okay. <laughs> um, I'd say go in eyes wide open, understanding that every arts organization ever has had a patron, and you know ours is the United States military. And I think Curtis touched on this earlier, but just you know managing your expectations of what repertoire you're going to be playing, and it doesn't mean you can't play great music. I mean, when I when I was coming up through the ranks as an oboist, I you know I played in quintets, and we had plenty of opportunity to play. Nielsen and you know great quintet works but we also needed to be able to play Italian folk songs and things that were you know applicable to the, the local population wherever we went or you know our, our quintets uh, learning 
Micronesian pop songs. I mean, that's that's going to be part of the job. But you will have the opportunity to make a living playing music and, like I said, bringing people together. And so just being aware, though, of you know, who's paying the bills and what that means for repertoire. Wes, you get the last word. Ooh, no pressure. Um, I, I kind of want to just echo what ME2 Bookman said, mostly. Uh, I, we, we hit everything else. Versatility is a huge deal in the military. Um, like he said, we have to play, like it, we, it could be in the same uh, like ceremony, playing jazz, pop, classical, country, anything all at once, back to back to back to back. So if you're a classical player, reach out to the jazz faculty. If you're a jazz player, reach out to the classical faculty. Everybody's, you know, like you have your resources now, so use them because they will set you up for success later. If you're a choir person, uh, reach out to jazz, reach out to piano, reach out to anybody because you can build those skills now and then use them later on. And that is going to be one of the most helpful things in setting up a successful career. Fantastic. Andrew, any closing comments? Nope. Just thanks very much for being part of this, everybody. Yeah, let me, I'm going to turn off the recording and I'll we'll say goodbye to all of you in just a second. Uh, but thanks to all of you for joining us. This is fantastic. This is exactly what we'd hoped for. And uh, we appreciate it. We wish you all, we wish you all great luck. Thanks.